Charles here for To Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie a tiny pheasant tail nymph. Now, I've tied a lot of very small flies in the past. And my pheasant tail, I'm looking at some of them here. I mean, they were overdone, really. I, I had tails on them, little legs, uh, wing cases, and the things are this big. Uh, what's the point? I mean, I got to the point where I realized, like, this overkill, it just makes the, makes the fly longer to uh, tie. <laughs> Nearly fell in the garbage can. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't think it adds anything to the fishiness. So over the years, my pheasant tails and other nymphs, when I tied them small, just got simpler and simpler and simpler, and I still caught fish on them. So let's look at this very simple uh, pheasant tail. This is how I tie them now, and um, you know, it's, you can knock them off very, very quickly. So let's get going and looking at the materials. Our hook is a Daiichi 1270 uh, in size 20. That's the same as a Tiemco 200R, same kind of hook. My thread is this nice sage olive in uh, 16 aught Vivas thread. We're going to put a rib on this, but I don't have wire that's small enough, so we're going to use this nice copper colored Vivas 10 aught for the rib. And the um, body is going to be pheasant tail, and the thorax is going to be peacock curl. So let's get going. Okay, just take off a bit of orange. You don't need much. And now the pheasant tail, and we tie it in by the tips. I don't tie it directly at the tip because it's very weak there. I'll tie it, you know, a quarter of an inch or so beyond that point. Now wind it all right back around the bend of the hook. Then come forward, trim off that excess bits here. Now, see, I've already broken one. That's how fragile I are. So we'll work with two instead of three. Come in with your uh, hackle pliers and don't put tension on. You can see the result right off the bat. Go as lightly as possible. Try not to hit the hook point. This is really light tension. Now what you could do with that, that tag end here, if you wanted to, you could fold them back, use them as a wing case. I wouldn't bother. Okay, now for the rib. And this stuff is slippery and it's tiny, so it helps to put some hackle pliers on it to get the grip. There we go. And now for a peacock curl. When I'm doing this pattern, I like to try to pick a peacock curl where the uh, the fluff, if you will, on the on the quilt is not very thick. I'm trying to make this a little understated, and I don't. Uh, I tie it in at the tip, but not real close to the tip, because that just invites breaking off. You can see how easy that breaks. So, um, you know, I want to give myself a little bit of a fighting chance for it not to break. Now, when I wind this, I come forward almost to the eye, then back, and then forward. Sort of to make it as a fairly dense. Um, thorax. Now, at this stage of the game, I'm not going to do this, but if you wanted to add more durability to the uh, thorax, you could make a, a pass up and back with your thread in a, like wide turns and make sort of a crisscross in it. That will help secure that thorax. I'm not going to worry about that today, but that's an option you could do. 
So now we whip finish. And there we go. There's our pheasant tail nymph. Very simple. Um, quick to tie. As I say, if you do that back and forth over the th thorax, it'll be quite durable as well. And you can knock off dozens of these very, very quickly. They are very effective late summer. Uh, there's a lot of small insects coming off in late summer. And, you know, this works uh, both for mayfly and for caddis. You know, really look at it. I mean, it's generic. And that's what makes it so effective. And as I say, I've learned through experience that putting a lot of fancy extra stuff on a small nymph is really a waste of time. You can do it if you want to do it for fun. There's nothing wrong with it if you like doing it. But oh, not anymore. <laughs> this is what I do. Very simple, and it works. So give it a try, the tiny pheasant tail nymph. Cheers.